mean no? Okay, okay. Welcome back to the From the Fabricator podcast. This is episode number 11. Uh, a little delayed uh, because, well, frankly, uh, it ran into some guest problems uh, last month. Uh, first time it took, uh, it took a bunch of episodes for that to finally happen where uh, uh, I, I got ghosted, uh, which uh, I, I was really kind of surprised. But uh, uh, it, it's all good. Uh, we have recovered. We have uh, some good things lined up. Uh, today's podcast I am really excited about. Uh, and then I have a special podcast uh, coming later in the month. Uh, so there'll still be 12 podcasts this year, a uh, very special one later in the month I'll talk about uh, at the end of today's show. But thank you for joining me. Thank you for supporting. Uh, I hope uh, you're still into wanting to listen to this or watch this after uh, me taking a little bit of time off. Thanks to the uh, ghosted guest scenario. Uh, you, you win some and lose some folks. Anyway, I've got three great guests for you today. But before I talk about that, just a quick note. Um, obviously, Supply chain right now out there uh, is is causing uh, a lot of people a lot of angst, and we are rolling with the punches uh, and keep doing it, folks. Keep uh, communicating up and down that chain. That is the best that you can do, and uh, we're going to keep our eyes on things. Uh, economically, uh, there's definitely some fears with price escalations. Tom Jackson, who's one of my guests uh, from Steel Encounters, talks about it a little bit during his section on the podcast. Definitely something uh, we're all paying attention to, and we're all kind of hoping for the best. Uh, with regards to that. So there is some concern there on what's going on with, with uh, the supply chain, price escalation, uh, and so on, because uh, it will, will wreak some havoc. Uh, so Tom is one of my guests from Steel Encounters. He is fantastic. I also have Chris Phillips from Showcase Shower Door. Uh, he is uh, what I, who I call the king of all shower doors. And uh, as I joked on my pod with him, Bill Dobman is probably not happy with me now that I, I called Chris that, but Chris is the man uh, and very proud of what he's accomplished in his career. And then I end with Rich Pareko, a good friend of mine, who's got a pretty cool venture uh, that is out there. And we talk about that. We talk about marketing and some other things. And Richie is a very, very good man. And I screw up the name of his website, like all throughout it. So uh, I apologize. It's constructioncreative.com uh, or sandandsoda.com. So I'm just getting that extra out there because I screwed up during uh, the recording. And he's too nice of a guy to, to correct me. Uh, and before I go to the first interview, uh, just the thoughts going out to, uh, to all my friends in British Columbia, Vancouver area, They're just getting crushed with some awful weather uh, that are causing uh, a lot of uh, natural disasters up in that area. Uh, and I know that uh, it's a little bit of a struggle uh, right now for a lot of the folks in that area. And uh, I'm a big fan and care a lot about uh, the fine folks uh, in the uh, Vancouver, British Columbia area, and uh, I'm, I'm rooting for you. Thoughts and prayers are with you and your families. And I think uh, those of us in the United States, we're not hearing a lot about it. Uh, and so I think we just have to give, uh, give some thought and uh, positive thoughts uh, to our friends north of the border there. So uh, that said, uh, let's get ready to jump into this podcast. Very excited. Uh, three great guests. And we're going to start it off with Tom Jackson, Steel Encounters. Tremendous guy, tremendous interview. Here we go. Okay, okay. I am thrilled to uh, bring in my next guest. This is Tom Jackson, the president and CEO of Steel Encounters out in Utah. Uh, you can find him online at www.steelencounters.com. I've been a humongous fan of this man for many, many years and his company. Uh, they've done tremendous work and uh, it's just great. I, I can't wait to get to talk to you. Thanks for doing the podcast, Tom. Well, thank you, Max. It's a, it's a delight to be here and, and thank you for your kind words. Appreciate it. Absolutely. And, and you're deserving. And I'm excited for, for, you know, you, you had shared with me some of, uh, you know, some of your thoughts and it, it, this is absolutely fascinating. And my first question to you was, you know, talk, talk to me a little bit about your past. And when I was looking down at some of the things, the fact that you wanted to be an astronaut, cause that's like right in my, my wheelhouse, you know, talk to me about growing up, what you wanted to do, you know, that, that path here, because uh, you took a very interesting path. I, I think your past might be one of the most interesting ones I've run across since I started this podcast. Well, thank you. Um, so I think to, to really understand where I came from, um, you have to understand the home that I grew up in. So my father was a World War II veteran. He was a, a bombardier in a European theater uh, flew 65 combat missions. Um, he grew up during the Depression era, so he had quite a, a work ethic. 
Um, I was born in the early 60s, so the Apollo space program was huge for me. Sure. And I was so into it. Um, I actually broke my leg skiing when I was 10 years old, I think. And so I had a cast on my leg and the Apollo 17 astronauts were over in Boise, Idaho. And my, uh, for a, a luncheon deal for the Chamber of Commerce, my father took me over there and the astronauts signed my cast oh of my all gosh. things, of all crazy things. So, um, but anyway, anything Apollo, I, I just couldn't, couldn't miss it. I loved it so much as a kid. Uh, my dad was quite the adventurer. Um, I think I was about uh, 11 or 12. He took three of my sisters and I out of school and we drove to the Panama Canal in his motorhome. Just crazy stuff. You know, we <laughs> went down and, and it was just, it was so much fun. But he was intrigued with South America because to get his bomber to Europe, he flew over the Amazon. And then Eastern Brazil is the shortest route to Africa to get his bomber across. And so he promised he would always go back there. So okay. anyway, that's how we ended up down there. Um, my father had a propane business that he purchased in Nyssa, Oregon, just a little tiny dot on the map in Eastern, right on the Idaho border, yeah, in the Snake River. And uh, all of us had uh, had to work for him growing up. And, uh, and there were eight of you. You're, you're, you're one of eight. You were one of eight kids, right? I was one of eight. I was the youngest. Oh, my gosh. I was the youngest of eight kids. Yeah, wow. crazy. Six sisters in there. Okay. Okay. Lots of yeah, people to protect uh, you at that point. Oh yeah. It was, it was interesting. It was fun though. We had a, it was a great family experience, but um, my father, my very first contract I ever signed, I was 12 years old and I wanted a 12 gauge shotgun. So my dad agreed to buy it for me, but in exchange, he had a hundred thousand gallon propane tank for his propane business so that would be two and a half train cars just to give a perspective of okay. the size of this and so i went down with the paint on the handlebars of my bike and went out and painted those and and the, the trestle that dropped out over the train tracks painted that in exchange for that shotgun um, and then later uh, when i was 16 my father got me a job in kansas mm -hmm. working in the oil fields so I would spend my high school summers, go back to Kansas, work in the oil fields and um, until I got into college. N so, not the typical crazy. high school, not the typical high school summer. And I have to, I have to back up. How long did it take you to paint that propane tank? Because I mean, we're talking, this is before spray guns. I mean, you're, you're using yeah. a roller or a brush, right? I mean, that's all you're using. I'm curious. Yeah. How long did it take I had a you? Roller with a long stick. So I could, I could reach most of the way up from the bottom and then stand yeah. on the top and do over the edge i think it took me about a week to do that tank and all the pipes and yeah it was crazy well but so now we fun. know now we know how you developed the work ethic and then you you come over to our world and, and you got into the glass business in 82 talk about you know getting into the glass and glazing world because again it's another really interesting path that uh that you took and 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 you've fallen in love like we all have with this industry that's yeah. the beautiful thing once i think we all get into the industry you never leave because uh, because no. it, it gets you but talk about your past from from 82 getting into the industry and moving forward well the the summer of 82 i just finished my sophomore year of college and uh, i had a brother-in-law that was a contract blazer up in the seattle market so i went up for the summer to work for him i was kind of tired of tired of the oil industry and i just fell in love with it um I actually, one of the first projects I got to work on was a 28-story high-rise in downtown Seattle. Um, and so over these next six years that I, I worked for him, um, I traveled all over the country, went to Alaska, Hawaii, wow. um, every major city on the West Coast, New York, um, Texas. Um, and I ended up in Utah for a project, and that's where I met my lovely wife, um, Miss Susie Jackson. Love it. And uh, fell in love with her and took her to California for a few years. And then the call to come back here was her family. Her parents are like second parents to me. We wanted yeah. to raise our kids here with them. And so we came back to Utah and I actually worked for a competitor to Steel Encounters. Okay. And Ira Field here um, had heard about me from uh, of all people, Garrett Henson at Viracon. Wow. He's the one that introduced me to, to Ira. 
And um, anyway, a few years later, we got connected and Ira hired me as a project manager. And, and the rest and, is history in a way. So yes, yeah, I, I love I love the the wife angle because I, I have the same thing. I mean, I grew up in Pittsburgh. Uh, she was from Michigan. You know, I ended up in Michigan because her family's here, and her family is obviously is like a second family to me too. So I I I can I can vibe with that. And I mean, that's uh that's incredible. So so and I love the Garrett connection. You know, Garrett is more than just a great college punter and super salesman for Viacom. He he is a uh, super sales leader manager. You know. He's uh, he, he obviously made a great connection with, with you. And now, you know, you, you climb the ladder basically at, at Steel Encounters. And uh, again, yes. Steel Encounters is at www.steelencounters.com. Uh, you know, you, you have taken the role of president and CEO, but that took some time. You, you climb the ladder. But everything you've done there has been very interesting to me because that it is not your everyday company. Right. I mean, this is I, there's not a lot of companies in, in this industry like yours. We are very unique. Uh, we actually have two business models, uh, a structural steel supply business with an office in Seattle, an office here and, a, and an office in Jacksonville, Arkansas. And then our architectural division for glass glazing, metal panels and, and other connecting architectural products. Um, been really fortunate. And it's good that we have two, two business models. They actually, go like this. It's like Smart. a seesaw. Right. They, we, we, the, the two divisions buoy each other and being in different markets helps us um, when economic changes happen in, in, in these different regions of the country. It's, right. a, it's a really good thing for us. Right. And, and yeah. you're an ESOP, which is also something that's not common in our world. No, no, it is not common. Yeah. Anyway, 2005, we became an ESOP. At that time, there were three majority owners of the company that were looking at retiring or, or moving their shares to others. And they thought, you know what, let's give the company to the employees. And so they set up an ESOP trust and started putting money into it as a retirement benefit for the employees and then selling their shares to the ESOP. Mm -hmm. So currently 75% of our company is held by the employees. Right. Which is a great, yeah. which is great. Yeah, and very is rare. great. And, and that's what leads me to my next question. When I, uh, I, I could say this, when I fell in love with you, it was when you, you talked about the culture at Steel Encounters. You know, uh, I had known you, you know, off and on through the years, just, you know, from, you know, seeing you at, at conferences. But when I heard you speak about the culture and about what you, you and the team have put together there, that's when it, it was like, it clicked for me. It was like, this, this, this guy's unbelievable. I talk about, you know, it did not happen overnight and, and no. it's something that you guys continue to work on. It's, you know, I think you've created an, an incredible atmosphere, but you don't stop, you know, you, you keep going. I, I'd love to know a little bit more and for the audience about the culture that, that's been created with you and the team at Steel Encounters. Well, thank you. We really want to create an employee ownership culture. Mm -hmm. And this is the hardest thing to, to teach and to create because people aren't familiar with this. They're used, used to working for some. Creating this culture is, it takes a lot of effort and it takes a lot of transparency and vulnerability to really help people understand what an ESOP is. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we, we, I think we've taken this to a new level. You know, with 75% with of the company being owned by the employees, they deserve to know how we're doing financially. They, they need to know uh, that they can make a difference in our profitability and in their own well-being. Mm -hmm. And so we've been, we've been working on this. You know, we started this journey about six years ago, and I spoke on this, uh, I think it was 2017 or 18 yeah. at the BEC, somewhere yep. in there. Yep. Uh, we've done quite a bit since then, actually. Max, we, okay. we completely overhauled our vision statement. Nobody could quote it. I think it was 15 words. It was so long. So we cut it down to six simple words. Okay. And that is building successful partners and employee owners. Nice. That's it. So what does that mean? Successful partners. These are our customers. These are the contractors, engineers, architects. These are the people we buy product from. We want to have successful relationships with the people we do business with outside the company. 
That's just paramount to our success. The other part of it, I like to take out two words and just say building successful employee owners. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Well, to me, it means we're helping our employees be financially successful with their right. retirement benefit, uh, the bonuses we give them, the salary they make. Um, we, we want them to have a career path. If you come to Steel Encounters, we want to give opportunities for people that want to grow right. and want to advance in a company. And then there's also their health and well-being, which is important to me. Their, their physical health, their mental health, and the health with them and, and their relationships, right. both at work and at home. It all matters. And, and that's where you were ahead of the game, I believe, is that when you talked in 17 or 18, you know, you were one of the first people to talk about that, that, that mental health aspect, you know, and, and the generational gap and so on. It, it was, it was out there, but it wasn't like it is now. I mean, now it's, everybody's talking about, you know, mental health is very important and, and people get it, but you were way ahead of that. And that helped. And you created even way back when it was, I think a web portal before it became an app that, that, you know, folks could communicate and that made a big yeah, difference. Absolutely. Yeah. No, yes. no doubt. Well, thank you. Um, the, the app is, is paramount to our communication with our employees. Um, the other couple of other things that we've done to, to help us develop this culture, uh, when we, we created our vision, we also dialed in our core values. Mm -hmm. And this is really important because we espouse everyone who works here to act this way. Right. And so our five core values are humble, which goes without saying hungry. That's a great work ethic, right? It is. Uh, respectful of others, customers, and each other. Quality, we, the, the work that we do matters. The quality that we leave behind on our job sites should be something the customer can feel. Sure. Feel and see and touch. And then, of course, honor commitments. And the honor and commitments is one of my favorites. I've seen our employees do incredible things for customers and for each other. Um, that I could tell you all kinds of fun stories about what people have done. Um, and so in doing this, we actually created a coins recognition program. And so this is the respectful coin. So we have the five coins. If you come through our offices, you'll see these on some of our employee shelves. Uh, when I give one, I like to write them a personal note. Nice. Very nice. And then I put the, the coin in an envelope and I mail it to their house. Oh, wow. And so the family reason I send it to their house, mm -hmm. yeah, I want their family to be proud of them. Yep. You know, their spouse, their kids. Hey, look, look what, look what my boss gave me. He recognized the extra effort. And let's face it, in this business where we work long hours and we work hard, it affects our families. And as employers, we need to be grateful to our employees' families, especially their spouses. No doubt. For what they give to us as a company. And no doubt. And I love you. You know, those of you watching on YouTube, you get to see the coin. If you're not watching on YouTube, you should get the YouTube uh, version so you could see uh, the coin there and five different coins. And I love that you send it to the house because you're right. So many times when people get, a, get a rewarded or awarded or honored at work, it never makes it all the way home. Uh, yeah. and, and so the fact that you do that is a nice extra step. And then the other thing I keep thinking about is that those five core values sure seem like they came from your dad. Uh, just given the given given the the military influence and just just the way you grew up, I, I was just flashbacking back to to you painting you know, painting the propane tank and you know you know you you made the commitment, you got it done, you came through, you know the whole the whole you know, the whole shooting match there. So I love it, I love it, I like where you're going with all of that. So again, if I didn't have you on a pedestal before, I got you on one now for sure. Well, I I don't think I deserve to be on a pedestal, but um, I'm grateful. Uh, for your kind words, Max. Absolutely. I'd like to share something else with you that, please, that came please. from this employee development. This is the career path. Yeah. So uh, in, in Utah, uh, there was no apprenticeship program mm -hmm. for Glazers. And so we created our own Still Encounters. We yes. put a, a couple of years of effort into this. Uh, we hired college interns. And over a period of three summers, we developed three years of curriculum with PowerPoints, uh, glazing safety codes, uh, building codes, fire codes, ADA, as well as the trades. But what makes our program really unique 
is we're looking at the whole life of the individual being successful. It's not just teaching them a trade yeah. and the intricacies of this business. We're also teaching them financial wellness. So this, this spring, we have a, a Dave Ramsey course that we're going to put our apprenticeships through, Super. apprenticeship kids through. Yeah. Um, uh, last night and tomorrow night, we will have a uh, professional come in and teach on, on uh, drug and alcohol issue avoidance um, with, with curriculum, you know, and when yeah. we, when we look for curriculum or for teachers for this program, we have specific things in mind for a result or an outcome and the learning track that we want to share with our apprentices. So anyway, we started the program four years ago. Mm -hmm. We applied to the Department of Labor and the NGA is very familiar with what we're doing here. We've, yes. we've shared a yes. lot there. And then uh, three years ago, so we started the program. We just graduated the first, first group. Uh, three years ago, we we uh, I reached out to some friends in the in the industry, some competitors, mm -hmm. and we formed the Utah Glass Association and turned the program over to the UGA, right. so it would be completely sustainable. And now with our UGA partners, the program's even better. Max, Wonderful. I'm so proud of of what's happening with you, that you, apprenticeship. Uh, absolutely, you should be. You should be, and that's that's something that when I had asked you what can the industry do better, you know, you would come back to me with you know, here's what we did. And, and, and it was this, this, this apprenticeship program and being able to get involved and then taking it the step further with the UGA. And then, you know, just that, that teaching beyond the trade, you know, the drug and alcohol Absolutely. avoidance and awareness and, and, you know, the finan financial is unbelievable because that's the one, if I have a, you know, one of my many pet peeves in life is I hate that the schools these days don't teach real life sort of skills. And it's like, Absolutely. you know, kids don't understand money. They don't understand how, how money works and how credit works and, and so on and so forth. And, you know, I'd you know, they can find out so much of what they learn in school from Google now, but you need to teach them about how to handle money and what a budget is and how taxes work and so on and so forth. And I love that you're doing that because we sometimes make the assumption people just know and they don't. Uh, and so you're doing this and that's how we can attract more people to our industry is doing these things that, that you're, you're showing. And we have to keep doing that. And I, a great start with UGA. I know Nicole Harris and NGA are, are moving more in that direction and doing great things. And so uh, we, we just need to get that tidal wave going more and more people following that lead. So hopefully this podcast can spur some more folks on. So I like what you have. Oh, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So switching gears, the glass geek, the glass nerd in my, in me, I always ask at every, every podcast, mostly every interview to tell me about a project you're proud of or a project that I should be interested in. And those who are getting, going to watch on YouTube, you know, I'll put the pictures up or the video if there is any of the project. And you came back with one that checks every single box of being kind of a glass and glazing geek or glass and glazing nerd. It is uh, an incredible project, City Creek. Uh, and so as you're talking, I'm going to, you know, uh, for those watching on YouTube, put the pictures up. Uh, tell me about this project from start to finish, because this thing is absolutely amazing. Oh, it was such a gem. We were so fortunate. So uh, if, if you recall, I think we were at the BEC in 2007 when the stock market was crashing and we were entering into the recession and all this bad stuff was happening. And um, in Salt Lake City, um, the uh, City Creek Reserve which, um, had a couple blocks of, of uh, retail malls and they had a high rise and they this they were moved into completely tearing down, leveling everything on these two blocks or most of it, and then reconstructing a real gem called City Creek. Okay. And so this project, we were we were so fortunate, we were we were able to participate in it. Um, the multiple scopes on this project in today's value would be well over a hundred million dollars wow. of glass and glazing and metal panel scope. Um, and the thing that was interesting, while we were doing this project, we were also doing a high rise just down the street, a couple blocks, the 222 South Main job, which uh, we were purchasing from uh, Texas Walls, a unitized curtain wall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so during this project, they were purchased by Old Castle. Okay. And then we had two more high rises in the City Creek development. One was with Vista Wall, and they were purchased by Old Castle. Yes, they were, right? 
that was a 22 story or something like that. And then we had a 33 story uh, that we were uh, that we were buying from uh, Fulton Windows up in Mississauga, Canada, <laughs> and they were purchased by Old Castle during this job. So it was quite the, the transition during this project. Sure. But our scope on this project, um, we had those two high rises and then we had two 10 story with really sharp radius uh, glass in the corners of the building mm -hmm. for a 10 story tall curtain wall. That was quite, that was actually the most difficult thing we did on the project. Bought the glass twice. Oops, I was supposed to reveal that, but we, we did, we had to, we had to change it. Um, but anyway, that was, that was difficult. Um, then on the two blocks of the project, there's two four story malls with creeks running through them that have trout in the creeks. Oh, wow. Inside the mall. Yeah. Isn't that wow. crazy? Then over the mall, they have these retractable glass roofs that are motorized. Now we didn't do the motorized portion of those, but we clad those skylights and each one of those retractable panels are 60 by 60 square feet. And we did 12 of those. Nice. On this nice. Project. Um, and then we also had four big arch top cable net glass walls that were very unique. We've never done one of those. Uh, and then some jumbo uh, folding folding doors that were 34 feet wide, 13 foot tall, to give the complete feel of an indoor outdoor mall. So you could walk in, no entrance, just a big opening, skylight retracted. Uh, it's 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 the gym. Then the other part of this is right. a glass bridge that spans between these two blocks right over Main Street. And so this bridge was constructed on the side of the street and picked up with two huge cranes and spun and set in place. And actually, National Geographic came out and filled the, filmed this, and they, they put a, a segment on their building part things or something. I can't remember what the name of the show was, but they actually did a documentary of the setting of this bridge. Love it. And so uh, that bridge was a gym, too. Um, we have glass down both sides. It's laser etched. Um, the train runs underneath the bridge. And so um, early in the, the project, the contractor contacted me and said, hey, could you do something to protect the bridge and, and the scaffold? We had to build scaffold on both sides of the bridge to span from one block to the other. Um, it, it was like a 80 foot span between these two scaffold towers. We put monorails on it so we could do the work, but they wanted us to completely enclose the scaffold and they wanted us to build a phenolic shield underneath it to protect from the electrical lines. Well, I had no clue. I'm like, okay, we'll see what we can do. So I called tracks, okay. which is our, our uh, which is over the electric trains here. I said, who is the best engineer to help us resolve this issue? They gave me some guy's name. It was the jackpot. He knew exactly what to oh, do. That's great. Gave us engineer drawing. In fact, he installed his company installed this shield on the bridge. So if you ever see the video of the bridge being installed, yeah, there's like a 70 foot long um, phenolic planked shields going out. So when they picked up the bridge and set it over the train, the next day the trains were running and there was no word, no concern about uh, arcing between the, the power lines and the bridge. Amazing, really cool. Yeah. And the roof of this. We also did the mechanized roof Right is a goal opening. We had 16 uh, roof panels that we put the same glass on. We put skylights on them and they operate like that. Really cool. Um, I, I can see why you're, this is, this is your favorite job. I mean, it's, uh, it, it's something it's definitely, it's one of those once in a lifetime sort of jobs too. I mean, because you touch so many different areas. It, it was life for four years. <laughs> <laughs> And especially at that time too, like you said, that time was, it was a little perilous. So that was a huge job to have during that time, you know, right after everything was going on. So, uh, you know, it, it, it all kind of came at the right time for you guys as well. So it did. Uh, we were it, fortunate. It really is, uh, you know, and, and again, I think everybody, it, when I first started this podcast, I, I, didn't, I didn't plan on doing, you know, a project of, of, of the pod or anything. I kind of talked about it, but I had shown one project with Tom O'Malley from Clover Architectural, and the feedback I got was, oh, we have to see one from everybody. 
this one could be the one that tops them all. But there's been interesting stories from each person. I've loved the stories I've heard from from folks like, you know, we, we have mutual friend Omar from from Momentum. Yeah. I loved his story because that that job meant so much because it was such a challenge. This job for you means so much because my gosh, it's unbelievable. You, you know, it's just one of those gobsmacking jobs. You, you know, it's, uh, you can't believe it. So, uh, well, I, so I love it. I love it. Congrats. Congrats. And I'm Thank excited you. to share it. So before we wrap up, uh, it's been a good year. Uh, you, 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 you got uh, the Department of Labor thing going and everything worked out well there. Um, 2021 has been good for you otherwise overall. And what are you looking at 2022? 2021 has been a good year for us. Good year for Still Encounters. We've been very fortunate. Um, it, I, would, I would consider this a very successful year. 2022 we're moving into with good backlog for both divisions. Great. Um, I, I expect that from a revenue standpoint, uh, we're, I, I believe we'll actually have more revenue next year in 2022 than we will in 2021. But there's still some holes to fill in the schedule. Of course, yeah. you probably heard that from everybody. Oh, yeah. Um, but we're, we're, we're fortunate. We have some very nice projects moving through right now that are going to make 2022 a great year. Wonderful into 2023. So Fantastic. we're fortunate. Congrats, congrats. No, I, I'm 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 thrilled for you. And you're right. You're the holes are out there. Uh, it is it is a little concerning because it's it's not like it's something we've had to deal with. You know, the one thing I keep coming across is there's no playbook for this. There's no historical. Wow. You know, we know how to handle a recession. I don't want to do another recession, but we know how to handle a traditional recession. We know kind of the the things. This is you're you're really flying blind. Uh, it's it, you don't know yeah. you don't know what's coming. So. Uh, I think we're all in this together in a way. We are. Yes, we are. I, the, the biggest concern for me is escalation of material costs. Right. Because the, the fear is if, if, if things get too expensive, owners can't afford it. And then there could be a, a domino effect of project cancellations. Right. I'm not hearing any rumors of that, but that is, that is what's in the back of my mind. And I'm sure everybody feels the same way. It, it is the it is the number one worry and and it's 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 the the biggest thing that was discussed at glass build uh this fall uh in, in the circles i ran in and uh it, it's it's concerned because we as a as a trade a lot of times are value engineered out and so we don't have a lot of we don't have a lot of room to play with to begin with no. you know and, and so the, the you know we want those high value products you know we want that laser etch on all four surfaces sort of thing yeah. you know that's 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 what we want to sell um and so uh, I, I hope that we can, uh, you know, ride this storm a little bit and uh, get to the other side as fast as we can. But uh, I love what you're doing, uh, and I'm excited for the future. Uh, I've, I've been with Tom Jackson, President and CEO of Steel Encounters. Thank you so much for taking the time today. I loved hearing about your past. I love everything you're doing at, at, at the company Thank there. You. you and the team are, are fantastic, and excited to see what comes next. Thank you so much for your time, and thanks for doing this. Well, I look forward to seeing you at the BEC in a few months. Absolutely. We'll see, we'll see you in March in, in, uh, in Nashville. No tornadoes either. So it's going to be a good time and uh, can't, can't wait to, to visit with you again in person. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Max. Thank you. Okay. Okay. It is time for uh, a, a really, I think, a, a neat and a fun one. A great guy in our world, Chris Phillips from Showcase Shower Door, also GlassGadget.com. Uh, and also the, uh, the creator and the inventor or the founder of the uh, incredible uh, group on Facebook, the Shower Door Professionals Group. So, Chris, thank you for taking time out of your incredibly busy schedule to be with me. Wow, Max, thank you so much. It's really an honor to be here with you. Well, it's uh, honor is definitely all mine. I, I, uh, I, I have to say, I mean, I was, you know, the Shower Door Professional Group is unbelievable. We're, we're going to talk about that in a second on how you got that started and built. Um, and, and what you've done in your career has been fascinating. But one thing I, I you and I've talked back and forth, and I, I think I know your past because I think you have a family connection in this industry. But then I get confused. My brain's a little mushy anymore. Uh, so how, how did you get into this crazy business? And then uh, I, I do consider you and, and I know the Dobmans will be watching. They'll probably jump through the screen. I consider you the king of all shower doors. So somewhere Bill Dobman is probably, you know, punching at air like he is not. I am. And so is Keith. Right. But, but you, I, I, I give you that 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 crown, the king of all shower doors. How did you get into this business? 
Well, you remember correctly, I do come from a, a glazing family. Actually, my dad, I think, was the first generation of glazers. Uh, he, I, I think it was my uncle who got him into the business. I had an uncle, Ace, who was okay. a glazer. And if I'm not mistaken, he got my dad into it. Okay. So by the time I was, you know, in my late teens, early 20s, uh, my dad had been in the industry for a long time, and uh, he was really involved in, in a lot of projects in Las Vegas, um, and that's where I pretty much did my growing up. Okay. So he worked on a lot of those big hotels, casinos, and was um, really involved in the local union. I think he was vice president of the local. I think he was, uh, he was uh, definitely the apprenticeship coordinator. When my brother started um, as an apprentice and they're in local 2001, Las Vegas, Nevada. So my older brother went into the, to the biz and became a commercial glazer and was working on the, all those same, um, you know, kind of landmark buildings in Vegas, you know, Caesar's Palace and the, the Mirage and the, the old Hilton and the Flamingo and, you know, on and on, this goes on. Uh, so I never was really that interested in it. You know, I guess I spent most of my life just trying to stay out of the glass business because I wanted to be a rock star, you know. I love it. Okay. You know, okay. do something like productive with my life, you know. I, I love it. And but, before, uh, you, before you go on, I, I love the fact I love the fact that we both have brothers who are legends in Las Vegas, you know, because my, my, my brother is, is, the, is unbelievable and, 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 and a legend in Las Vegas. One day on this podcast, I'll have to tell the story of the purple shirt in Las Vegas. He, he just it was unbelievable okay. that night. Uh, and then uh, also you and I didn't want to be in this business either. And we both ended up in it, uh, which is, which is interesting, but go ahead, keep going, keep going. Yeah. It's hard to escape. Just keep pulling me back, you know? Right. But, uh, yeah. So, you know, like I say, I was in my late twenties or I late, late teens, early twenties, something like that. Starting to really think about, okay, I guess I'm going to have to find something to do that actually pays money. Um, cause you know, rock and roll definitely wasn't paying the bills. So I was just in having a chat with my dad one day and he started talking about, you know, his job and the money he was making, which, you know, sounded like a lot of money to me yeah. at that time. I was like, wow, maybe, uh, you know, maybe I should check this out. So he, like I say, he was the apprenticeship coordinator at the time. Um, so he made it really hard on me. <laughs> Because did. I didn't want anybody to think that, like, you know, I was getting any, you know, special treatment or anything. Sure, so sure. I think I had to work a little bit harder uh, to get in. But I did. And uh, what a blessing, you know, to cut your teeth um, on those those systems there, you know, in, in Las Vegas. Where, like, at that time, I don't know how it is today, but back in the 80s when I, when I was doing my apprenticeship, money was no object. Yeah. And you know, you could go to work on a building and there would be every imaginable glass system, you know, slope glaze and all kinds of storefront and curtain wall and brass, you know, like uh, architectural metals, you know, mm -hmm. inlays, um, handrails. It was just unbelievable. Um, so I really got to, to receive a great education there, really well-rounded, yeah. um, you know, gla glazing education in Las Vegas. So how did you morph then into the king of all shower doors? I mean, you're, you're, you're working, you're working on, on exterior and, you, you know, you, obviously you have a great depth of knowledge of, of all these different uh, exterior systems. So, so how'd you end up on the inside and all of a sudden uh, single-handedly uh, installing, uh, you know, three eighths panels, 88 by 130 in, in uh, somebody's house? Yeah, that's funny. Well, you know, I, I came to a point where I felt like, you know, it was time for me to go into business for myself. Okay. Uh, you know, it's just, uh, I could kind of see the writing was on the wall that things were changing in the industry. You know, I really wasn't sure how long I was going to be able to do the kind of work I was doing. Um, and by then I was over here in the Silicon Valley okay. area and uh, working on some, you know, some more great buildings over here, you know, like, you know, Google and Yahoo and mm -hmm. all those kinds of Apple um, all those big companies are over here and a lot of great class work too. But I decided to go into, into business for myself and I live over here in Santa Cruz, California. And uh, actually one day I was talking to my competitor 
I had a, a competitor, a glass company that was like right next door to me. Okay. And uh, we were standing there chatting and we did this quite a bit. And he said something along the lines that, well, wow, you know, these frameless shower doors are so popular. Someone could go into business doing nothing but that. And there would be plenty of work, you know? Wow. And I thought, wow, that's a great idea. So I took my competitor's idea yeah. and I put it into practice. Yeah, there you go. He, 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 was, I, he was asleep <laughs> at the wheel. You grabbed it. Yeah. So, you know, so I moved away from being kind of a full service glass shop into just specializing in, in shower doors. And I, the name of my company before was Santa Cruz Showcase. Okay. And so I changed the name of the company to Showcase Shower Door Company. Okay. And uh, we were off the races. So that's how I got, got into it. Now, you know, I don't, I, I think I have carved out a little corner of the industry for myself and you're very nice, Max. You always say the nicest things, you know. Well, it's, it's true. Uh, but it's true, though, with you. It's true. But, you know, I did start really thinking a, a couple of years back, probably three years ago, I started really thinking about, you know, the, the part of the industry that, that I'm involved in and wondering if there was something that I could do to really make more of a contribution yeah. and to play a bigger role in it. And I started thinking about, you know, in, uh, innovations, uh, right. coming up with ideas to, uh, to make working, um, with shower doors, just a little bit easier for sure. people. Um, and especially since I did a lot of solo installations, there was definitely a need for some utilities to make doing that type of work, um, a little bit easier for a one man crew to do. And so this leads into to, to my next question, and we will, you know, get back to I want to talk about the Facebook thing, too. But uh, you, the, the fact that you're an inventor, you know, so, so you had this idea of, OK, wow, you know, I'm doing a lot of these things solo or, you know, with limited help. What can I come up with that could make the shower door, you know, installation, you know, smoother? And so uh, there, there are five different you know, on glassgadget.com, which I also think you can get to through show, showcase shower door.com, too. You have these inventions and you have these available for people to purchase. Uh, and, and so you, you sent me five uh, different ones that we're going to show for th those of you watching on YouTube. Uh, you'll be able to see pictures of those on, on the screen. Uh, and, and those of you uh, listening on Spotify or Apple, please go check out uh, Chris Phillips's website. It's either showcaseshowerdoor.com or glassgadget. Uh, dot com. By the way, I looked up glassgadgets.com with an S and somebody's trying to sell it for like $100,000 or something like that. It's crazy. So uh, just oh, I'll have to see if I, yeah. I'll see if I, I've got that kind of money in the bank. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's probably in your couch, couch cushions. Yeah. Shower doors are big money. All right. So fir first one is uh, this roller, uh, this roller piece that I assume uh, allows again a, a single a single installer to maneuver easier. Talk about this roller piece that we're going to put up on the screen. Yeah, so this is kind of a one panel glass card. Okay, and I call it the Glazer Saver. Nice. And actually, a buddy of mine uh, suggested that as a name, and I thought oh, that's a great name for for the. It's got a nice ring to it, and so uh, basically, it's just a, a, a cart that can break down. Um, into parts that you can store easily just in the back of your truck, really kind of behind your seat. Um, pull it out when you need it. Not like those big old wooden skates that we use for plate glass, you know, sure. back in the day. They're super big and heavy. And it's really one of those is almost impossible to use with one guy anyway, unless you've got a pretty small uh, piece of glass. So the Glazer Saver has a channel that the glass slips down into. And the key feature to this is that when you lift the glass, the cart stays clipped onto the bottom. Okay. So you can lift it and move it. So if you're rolling it, you know, it, it through, a, through an area where that's, there's some gravel or that you have to cross rather than taking it off the cart and then moving the glass in the cart and putting it back together, you can just lift the whole thing up, walk past the gravel, set it back down and continue to roll it. Nice. And it's also really low profile so that you can um, actually roll your standard size door right through, you know, uh, an opening, a door opening. Yeah. And that was primarily the reason that I came up with this idea was so that, you know, like a lot of times there are really tight corners and it's tricky getting, you know, a piece of glass through a doorway. So 
it can roll kind of at an angle and you know get through a doorway pretty easily so that's the, those are the key features of that particular like it like innovation. it the, the next one is uh i believe you call it sticky hands it's a neat little suction cup uh scenario talk about that one yeah so uh, i have another invention it's called the extra hand and it's a okay pretty simple tool that goes on the edge of the glass uh fixed panel and allows you to kind of just tape that that utility to the wall and it will kind of balance your fixed panel on end just for a minute to free your hands. So, I mean, I won't hold it up, you know, for you all day and never leave it unattended, but, <laughs> but you can, you know, just kind of free your hands for a minute. If you're working alone um, while you grab a tool, grab a screw, grab a screw gun, you know, and run a screw or something like that. Well, the, the uh, one drawback to that tool is that it doesn't work well with, um, enclosures that utilize a header okay, because it kind of gets in the way of, of where the header goes. So I invented the sticky hand um, in order to, uh, to do that function. So it's a two piece tool that goes on either side of the fixed panel. And then you tape each side into place and it does the same thing. Nice. Nice. Okay. The next is the Whitlock. The Whitlock clip is one of my favorite tools because one of my friends, you know, a, a guy who I met from um, the Facebook group named Ricky Whitlock, okay. one day sent me a little sketch, you know, kind of something on a napkin or something. It's like, hey, I've got this idea for holding two panels in line, a door and a fixed panel in line and helping you line them up while you're doing a door installation. And uh, I thought it was a great idea. I had one little improvement, and that was that little cutaway on the top. Mm -hmm. So that allows you to see the corners of the glass to see if they're at the same height. And that was kind of my contribution to the, to the gadget. So the two of us kind of invented it together. I named it after Ricky uh, because he had the first idea, and it's really fun to do stuff like that you know, with somebody else. Prop, props to Ricky Whitlock. I like it. I That's like right. It. Uh, next, the last one is the graduator. It's a little step, stepped up thing. Uh, what, what is what is this? The graduator actually is, is a, a pretty cool little tool that uh, it takes the place of those shim packets that you used to get, you know, from the the dealer, they'll give you a little packet of shims. There's one's quarter, one's a 16th, one's three eighths, one's, right. you know, an eighth. And you stack them together to kind of find what the gap is okay. to find plumb, plumber level. Um, so what I did is, is threw that packet of shims away and just made one shim that steps up from a 16th to a three eighth. Nice. Okay. And 16th inch increment. So you can just quickly tell the size of your gaps by using okay. the tool. Yeah. And this last one, I think it's self-explanatory, <laughs> but it's, but it's probably one of your most popular ones is the clamp assist. Yeah. The clamp assistant tool is like probably the most popular tool. It's one of my favorites. Cause I love magnets. I love that kind of, you know, those kind of, um, you know, quirky little things. Mm -hmm. But, but um, it's really very effective. It's got a few different uses. And the primary use is when you're installing a fixed panel and you're using the little two inch um, glass clamps, getting the cover plate on one side of the glass and then running the screw from the inside can be impossible using right. one guy. Right. So these magnetic parts hold the parts together while you, know, you go in and just run the screw from the inside. Nice, nice. All of these and many, many more are actually on your website. Please check those out, showcaseshowerdoor.com or glassgadget.com. Uh, so, so let's talk about the Facebook uh, phenomenon. Uh, I mean, uh, that, that's what I would consider it is uh, you started a, a shower professionals group. It's still there. It's still, still popping. Um, great people on this, this group. Um, the one thing I've always said about this group is the the comportment, the attitude, the, the, the best practices, the sharing, it's the classiest group on the entire social media platform. I mean, it, you know, there's nobody, there's nobody, you know, bitching at each other. There's nobody complaining. It's all about, Hey, I did this. What do you think? Or, or what do you, what ideas do you have about that? It, it, it's a really nice group of excellent professionals. And, uh, really, really impressive. How did this, you know, when did this pop into your head? And then were you kind of shocked the way it kind of took off? Yeah, you know, I actually started this group up in 2009. Wow. 
Wow. Yeah. And, and I was just, I was one of those guys is like, when there's something new, I want to try it, you know, yeah. and back in those days they had they came up with these groups mm-hmm. I'm like oh maybe i'll make a group so i made a group and i think i call it like uh shower door manufacturing and installation something you know it had like right. it was like a mile long you know and I, I i can't remember if anybody joined it or not but you know it's just something i was messing around with back then and, and then in 2009 funny enough 10 years later uh, was the same time I was telling you a little bit earlier when I really started thinking about the industry and my, my role in it and wanting to find, uh, you know, a place to really land in it. And I looked at that again. I said, you know, I, I think I should really put a little effort into this. So, you know, I kind of promoted it a little bit. I mean, not a whole lot, but just started inviting people and actually being, being active myself on sure, it, sure. which is, is a big key, you know, to, um, to doing something. And, uh, and people started to get involved. And, you know, I asked the group, hey, what do you think about, you know, changing the name to something shorter? So we changed it to just shower door professionals. They all agreed on that. Uh, you know, another thing that came up was the, the group was public. So anybody could see any post. Right, right. And, um, and it came up that, hey, maybe we should make this private. Maybe, you know, our customers, are, you know, are looking and we don't want them to see, not that we have anything to hide. Right. But, you know, you, you don't want all of your cards out for everybody sure, to see, sure. right? You want to keep a few of them face down. Yeah. So so we decided to do that and just really started inviting people and really started kind of creating that culture that you're describing, Max, of of just cooperation Incredible and, culture. and support. You know, and it's like, it's not that nobody can rib anybody or nobody can, you know, to tease anybody because you want to have a sense of humor. We want to keep that kind of banter. But we don't allow people to be mean. We don't allow people to be trolls, right. you know. Um, and so we kind of um, put the kibosh on it when that happened. And I, I think it really flourished because people, you know, cared about it. Yeah, yeah. And there's no doubt. I mean, I think you have a great crew of very loyal people on there, and then a mix of other folks that come in and out. Um, I, I highly recommend anybody who's in the shower door trade. Uh, they should be, you know you know, taking the time to at least follow it on Facebook. You don't have to be active. I mean, I don't, I mean, I, I follow where I can, but I love when I see the posts because it's, it's great for ideas. It's great for, for best practices. Um, you know, the, the, the details that, that, you know, this, this group gets into are, are, are really for the glass nerd uh, trademarked by Andrew Herring. I mean, it's a, you know, you have to, you, know, you want to be involved in it. You want to be into it. And a lot of really great business people too, um, really impressive business people. And uh, I, kudos to you to uh, really push and get it going. And, you know, now hundreds of people are involved in it and it's really a great home for anyone who's involved in the shower door trade. Uh, it's tremendous stuff, tremendous stuff. So props and congrats to you and, and, and everybody who's uh, in that community who's active. Thanks, Max. Yeah, you know, truly, I am the beneficiary of it. You know, I get more out of it than anybody else does. You know, we have recently passed like the 1600 members mark. Um, I don't know how many of those people are actually active, but as you know, we do a, a live stream yep. every Wednesday night, uh, 5 p.m. Central Time. I mean, uh, Pacific Time, 5, 5 p.m. Pacific. And, um, and, you know, we stream it to the Facebook group. We have a Zoom uh, meeting that we okay. attend and, and uh, it's pretty well attended. I mean, we're getting, you know, 15 20 people showing up on a weekly basis just to talk about the shower door business it's great it's fantastic and it's it's you know you're you said you're you know getting closer past the 1600 mark i think when you and i met which was 2019 i believe you were at 700 or 750 um wow. and because i do remember because you know i wanted you to come to glass build and i said you know he's got 700 people following him so the fact that you've uh, continued to add uh, at a very nice clip uh, is, 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 is saying something. And uh, I want to keep adding to it. I really think that anybody who's, uh, you know, in the shower door trade needs to be, uh, you know, needs to at least be at, at the very minimum following what's going on in this group, just because so many talented folks, and it's a great learning experience. And, and it only helps us as an industry. Um, you know, the more people that know and do things right, the better we all are. Uh, and that helps weed out the bad actors that give us a bad yeah. reputation. 
And that's, uh, that's and that's right. part of my goal too. So, so, so before I let you go, cause I know you're busy and I know it's uh, you know, it's, it's, it, it, it's, it's even after hours, your time, we're doing this late at night here. So uh, what, what's next for you? You know, I, I look at you as a guy that, that does not sit still. I know you, you want to get people trained uh, and give back. Uh, you know, you've created some things there. You, you're always inventing, you're always hustling. You, you know, uh, what is next in, in the Chris Phillips universe? Uh, are more the same or are you, you're going to morph off or uh, are you replacing, you know, Wolfgang Van Halen and Van Halen. I mean, what's going on here? What's next? I caught That's you on a great that idea. One. Caught you on that one. Yeah. You got me thinking now. Yep. You know, Max, I've got it all. I mean, I've really got it made. I've got an awesome life. You know, um, just being able to be a part of this industry the way that you guys have allowed me to, and just to kind of bring my little bit, you know of ability or talent or whatever to, to this little corner of, of the, uh, the industry has just been such a huge blessing for me. And, uh, and I just love it. You know, I um, would like to do more innovation. I like to spend more time inventing because that's so much fun. I love yeah. the 3d modeling part of it. I love the, the research part of it. It's great. You know, I've met some great people and made some really good friends in the industry. And um, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm so busy in my shop, you know, I, I kind of was, things were kind of starting to slow down. So I started to kind of branch off and now I'm just so busy. I, I don't really have as much time to invent as I'd like to, but, um, but I think, you know, going forward, probably, you know, next year, or the year after that, you know, really kind of be gearing down the shower door business a little bit more and doing a little bit more innovation. Good. Good. All right. Good. Well, you are an important part of our industry. Uh, this has been Chris Phillips, Showcase Shower Door. You can find uh, his website at showcaseshowerdoor.com or glassgadget.com uh, just to, to find all the cool inventions. Uh, and on Facebook, by all means, the Shower Door Professionals. It's a private group, but uh, apply. And, uh, you know, uh, as long as you tell people you don't know me because it'll probably get you rejected, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll get in and, uh, and really... Uh, get a great feel for uh, what goes on in that excellent group. But uh, I appreciate all you do for our world, my friend. Uh, keep it up, keep up the good work and uh, keep those inventions coming and keep uh, you know the best practices and everything you're doing. It's definitely appreciated and noticed. And uh, let's keep rolling. Ditto, Max. Thanks so much for what you do. And thanks so much for just all the support that you've sent my way. I mean, it's, you've been a huge part of, of introducing me to other people and introducing me to the industry and you are just such a great guy such a <laughs> generous man I try. And, uh, thanks for all you do and keep and keep up the good work i appreciate that i'm a fan sir and uh happy okay. happy holidays in advance to you and uh thank you so much we'll see you soon Okay, okay. We are uh, now on to uh, one of my good friends in the industry and, and a person that I, I have a ton of respect for, a uh, big fan of, known him for quite a, quite a long time and uh, thrilled to have him on the podcast. Rich Pareko joins me, a constructive creative. He's also a writer. He's an entrepreneur. He's got the websites. He, got a, he does a little of everything. You can find him online at www.constructivecreative.com. Rich, thank you so much for giving me some time today. I love having you on the podcast. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. It's awesome. So, you know, you're a fascinating guy to me because, and we've got a lot to cover, but I want to start back with your past a little bit because you've got the brains that you could be a doctor. You got the brawn that you could be an MMA fighter, but yet you're in our, you're in our, our industry. Uh, and so how did you get here? I mean, uh, you know, and, and, and I'm not saying that, that you should be a doctor or anything. I love that your brains are with us, but uh, talk to me. How did you get to this point? Uh, how'd you find our industry and take, talk about your path? Well, as you alluded to there, uh, my pretty much my whole entire family is actually in medicine. And everybody always asks me, how come you didn't get into medicine? And my answer always is, would you want me to be operating on you? And the answer is always no. So <laughs> that's why I didn't get into there. But the glass industry. So I, when, I was, when I was going to college, I uh, was lucky enough to have a job with a company called RST Instruments, where I would work for two or three years and I'd take a year off and I'd go to Southeast Asia or Australia or Europe or, or wherever, South America, all over the place. And so um, 
I did that for about eight years. And uh, after a while, it was time to move on. So I worked for five years with uh, with Garibaldi in uh, sales and marketing and uh, cut my teeth and, and really got to know the industry, got to know the people, um, the products, the markets, so on and so forth. And, you know, hats off to uh, the Mobius brothers for, for letting me, uh, you know, gain all that experience. And, and so uh, actually I got, I got pink eye and, and it's funny now with the pandemic because I, I specifically remember going to Glassfield in, I would say 2007, okay. give or take in Atlanta mm -hmm. with pink eye and thinking at the time, oh my God, I hope I'm not spreading it around to people, <laughs> you know, fast forward however many years later and we all know how that turned out, but yeah. um, so uh, th th it wouldn't wouldn't leave me for um, a good month, and mm -hmm. and I went back to the office, and and uh, the guys at the office were like, "You can't work here until this clears up. You got to go home." So I went home, and I worked from home for a week or two, and while I was at home, I just had an idea. I thought I could do this full time all the time, and mm -hmm. um, and sure enough, about five or six months later. I started my own consultancy and have been out on my own ever since. Uh, so I, I tell people all the time that I've been doing, you know, gig work since way before it was a thing as of you mm -hmm. yep. um, and, and really, really enjoy it. You know, I, I love, I love the glass industry. I, I uh, really enjoy being an independent contractor um, just because I can work with so many different companies and I, and I get to see different best practices I get to see, you know, how different companies do different things. And quite often, it's funny, in this industry, there is a lot of crossover. Uh, when you think that one company has mastered a specific process, and then you go to another uh, fabricator and you see that they're actually doing it better than the way that you thought that was the ideal way of doing it, you know, it's, it's, um, it's, it's a great place to be sitting, and I really enjoy it. Yeah, no, absolutely. You've done a great job, uh, you know, with it. I didn't realize... I didn't realize what you had done before Garibaldi, uh, hmm. and then and then obviously I I never knew what the impetus was for you to go independent. And it is funny once you start, you know the you know you and I are old pros at the whole work from home sort of scenario where the rest of the world kind of figured it out in April of 2020. Uh, so so it is, and and you, you have to have a special sort of drive to do that. Absolutely, uh, and, and there's no doubt you have that. And, and it's funny, the rest of the world still hasn't caught up to where we are yet either. And, you know, they're only a couple of years or a year and a half deep. There is a lot of, um, I think, wake up calls to be had uh, once people uh, start realizing that when they're working, working remotely and there's meetings going on that they're not attending, and in, you know, seeing movement going on at the office versus working 100 or 200 kilometers miles away from, from their office, I think people are going to start wanting to get back to the office a lot yeah. faster. You know, I know it's already happening. It's been happening from the beginning, but I think there's going to be definitely a, um, a momentum there as well. Yeah, I, I definitely see the hybrid model uh, going where people are going back three days a week, something like that. And, you know, because I, I do think both the ownerships of these companies want to have uh, their folks there uh, to see them and work with them. And uh, and then I think the, the people themselves, uh, you know, just uh, need to be there, need to, to be involved and need that interaction. So uh, the majority of people that are doing the whole work from home thing, I think it's a different sort of story right now versus, uh, uh, you know, versus what, what it could be. So. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yeah. So, so, so now one of the things that, that got me really going, so you're a writer, you, you, you're a freelance writer, but you, you, your stuff's always in glass Canada magazine, which is one of my favorite uh, publications. Patrick Flannery is a tremendous human being, awesome. uh, big fan of mine. big, I'm a big fan of his, not big fan of mine, big fan of his. That's what I meant. Uh, and you, you, you had an interesting article recently about, you know, marketing changes and, and you always have some interesting articles, but this one really caught my eye as a marketer was that if you're not paying attention to what's going on with, with email and email blast, you, you might run into a, a little bit of trouble. So for those of, you know, those of uh, uh, the folks out there who may not have caught it, get, give us a little rundown. What do we have to be aware of on this whole email blast issue uh, and changes within the Google world and so on? Sure. So uh, email marketing is my most favorite type of marketing. Well, it's up there with social media. Sometimes social media is a bit of a, uh, 
you know, there, there's pros and there's cons to it. Uh, but but email marketing is one of those, um, you know, one of those channels that you can send out to 5,000, 10,000 plus people in a matter of seconds, and you have full control over it versus uh, yeah, social media, which is sometimes not necessarily under your control mm. and uh, you know you leave it up to your fans and so on and so forth what's happening is is apple is giving you the option to opt into their privacy uh, privacy program and uh, what that will do is it will open every single email that you receive even if you haven't opened it and and what that will do is it'll give you a false it'll give me a false open <laughs> those open rates are going to look really good yeah really good but what I would definitely recommend is, um, is, is again, keep an eye, uh, watching click throughs. Cause mm -hmm. to me, that's really what, uh, what's yeah. important. Yeah. What are people clicking on? Yeah. You know, you send it to them. If they're clicking through to the landing page that you specified, that's job well done. That's what you, what, what you're looking for. So that data is, is still going to stay the same. And, um, and then obviously growing your lists is, is huge, you know, and cannot be an emphasis. Yeah. So, so really the, you know, one of the big morals of the story is, is always paying attention to the data that you get, but now even more than ever, because some of that data may not match historically because the game has changed a little bit. It won't. Yeah. So, it so won't that's, match. Yep. so that's, uh, that's something to be, uh, to be considered. And, uh, you know, uh, I think a lot of times people don't even look at it, especially at the ownership level, but, uh, but if the ownership level is looking at it and marketing people, especially, you know, I was unaware of those changes in, in the new iOS until I saw your article. Uh, and that's why I found it pretty fascinating was that I think it's just the start of things to come. Uh, and so you have to be very vigilant uh, with regards to the way this is all going to proceed. Totally. So, uh, you know, Apple is such a behemoth and they control so much. It, it is frustrating from a marketing point of view that you have a company come in and basically take away one of our tools and the tool chest because, it, because there are other things that it will affect. Uh, if you want to do an A-B test, which is yeah. if you want to have two different subject lines and then yep. have a, a constant contact, choose which of those two are performing the best and then send out the rest. So you take 20% of your list and 20% of your list and you send yeah. A and B. Well, that's going to be an issue because the opens aren't going to necessarily be right. accurate. And, right. and then also doing um, automatic um, so resends to, to um, those who didn't let, open. Yeah, people that didn't open it. That's because, you know, that's a big yeah. tactic. I mean, that and that's probably the biggest thing is is that uh, you know that that you have your initial send and you see that you know X amount didn't open and you set them aside and you hit them up again because they didn't open and now you know that's corrupted and you run the risk of now pissing those people off and right. and you know them unsubscribing which you don't yeah. want and so yeah. uh, this is a slippery slope. So it's good advice and good heads up by you. I was completely unaware. So. Thank well, you. Real, real quickly, yeah. I, I just wanted to mention to everybody, if you are interested in saving 30% off for three months, go to constructioncreative.com forward slash email. Okay, there you go. Constructivecreative.com forward slash email, right? That's what you just right. said. Yep. Right. So, yeah. So, all right. So speaking of constructivecreative.com, I mean, uh, again, I've known you, we've, we've, we've worked together on some occasions, you know, you, you know, I'm a big fan. You're a guerrilla marketer. You're a professional marketer. You do it the traditional way you do it, the untraditional way. Now you've added something brand new. And that's, you know, again, as a friend of mine, I wanted to bring you on because I, I like what you've got going on. Uh, you've brought something new uh, to, to your world uh, over at, uh, uh, I, I guess, constructivecreative.com with a new, whole new, a whole new offering. Bring it, bring it, bring it to light. What do we got here? Sure. I know, I know your mass email went out, but in case people yes. didn't see it, talk about what, do you, what what's new in the world of Rich Pareko. Okay, so this, honestly, 100%, every year when I've gone to buy you <laughs> a uh, Christmas present, I've, I've struggled with finding something that is interesting and fun. And, and honestly, uh, I've been searching for these things, this exact one, as well as, um, as the Glass Godfather for, for years. And, and, and just uh, so, you know, I, I get creative and have gotten some other non-glass related stuff mm -hmm. it just had me had me thinking for a long long time you know there's a, there's a glazer pride who does a great job matt you do a great job at, at you know stickers and, and some mm -hmm. apparel and, and whatnot and i'm you know i'm not getting into that that's that's matt's thing and and so on and so forth and, and but but for me 
I am, uh, you know, again, uh, thinking bigger and, 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 and I was, did this to have fun. I really, from a creative point of view, um, it has been extremely enjoyable to come up with, with uh, you know, Glass Geek. I, I came up, I, I went away for the weekend. Uh, I'm, I'm doing Glass Lover now. Uh, there's another one, uh, Shake and Bake for the tempers out there. So, you know, the sky's the limit. And I'm working on all these things. I love it. It's, it's, it's one of those projects. It's like a side project where it gets me up at, 5 30 in the morning with 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 pep in my step right and 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 you know i can work here for a couple hours before the usual day starts and it flies by i i find it super super fun and so so i did it more as a like a hobby sure and then as i'm as i was working on it i started to see you know there could be a real connection for other companies that want to do their branded merchandise mm -hmm. because um, I've, I've worked with, um, you know, uh, lots of companies in the glass industry that, uh, have wanted to do stores. You mm -hmm. and I have, have worked with companies yeah, that, in the glass that, that have done stores. Mm -hmm. Well, those branded merchandise companies, um, who shall remain nameless want a huge spend, yeah. $80,000 a year plus. You know, and, and before so. before you go on, just those of you who are watching on YouTube, you're seeing uh, the website and you're seeing what uh, Rich has to offer. Those of you listening uh, on Apple or Spotify, uh, definitely ch check out constructivecreative.com to see what we're talking about here. But keep going, Rich. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Or sandandsoda.com too. Or sandandsoda.com. That's S A N D A N D S O D A dot com. Correct. Sand correct. and soda. Right. Got it. Got yes, it. Yes, that's correct. So uh, I, again, I just I had a had a uh, vision that well I, I know from experience that mm -hmm. uh, building the store um, is exactly what multiple companies I've worked with in the past have tried to to do with other vendors and the other vendors were less than cooperative unless again you committed to a huge spend tens and tens of thousands of dollars right. if not up to six figures plus. Quite often, they also wanted ten to thirty thousand dollars just to build the store. Yeah. So they wanted a commitment, plus they wanted a hard cost setup. To me, I mean, I have more power to them, but I think it's it's way overkill um, to create a store. Uh, you know, it, it's something that you know it just comes naturally to me. It's like building a website. It's like building mm -hmm. an email. It's it's it just you can you can put it together. So this difference is if you, you only buy what you need. So if you have a customer in, I don't know, Atlanta, mm -hmm. and, and you don't want to have your items shipped to you and then have to break it all out, repackage it, reship it back out there. This is really, it's click and ship. Nice. So, um, so whether it's, it's your brand, uh, and that's the, 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 really the big emphasis is yes, I'm using Glass Geek, Glass Nerd, Glass Godfather, Santa Soda, and everything else. And 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 there has been a ton of positive uh, feedback on that. But I really want to highlight, this can be used for your logo as well. Nice. That that this it's not for just, just my brands. It's for other people's brands as well. And so we can set up basically a um, secure store Mm -hmm. So your customers can access it, your, your, uh, your employees uh, can, employees yeah. and so mm -hmm. on and so forth. And I think again, uh, you, you know, you're onto something with, with both, uh, you know, branded gear from, from a company, but also the fun stuff like glass Godfather and glass geek and, and, you know, sand and soda, uh, the things that we showed earlier, uh, online here, which, which, uh, which is awesome. So, uh, kudos and congrats to you. I, this is just getting underway and it's exciting uh and and hey if you can ship to nigeria you can pretty much ship anywhere uh so that's a it's a it's a good sign so all right so before we before we wrap up you know obviously you're excited about this you're excited about about uh, sand and soda and constructive creative uh what else are you excited for coming up into the new year what uh what's got you fired up yeah yeah there's lots actually um with, with the sand and soda the next step of that and this is just a little bit of a teaser but uh, the next step of that is drum roll please 
uh, shower door calculator, a shower door nice. cart slash calculator. So shower door uh, installers, mainly towards the shower door installers so that they can put it on their website. Again, uh, you, you uh, alluded to it earlier about culture and about, uh, you know, uh, about labor as well. So if, if that's if that's an extra person that you don't need to hire or that you can put put on to a different task, uh, giving out quotes and or accepting orders over the phone, this could be a tool, whether it's a slider or a barn door or a swing door, uh, basically anything but a really custom um you know, custom heavy shower. Sure, sure. Uh, those are always going to have to be uh, quoted. You know, always but, special, always special. Yeah, but eighty percent of the stuff that's out there is not special. Is is honestly a shower in the box, and, mm -hmm. and um, can be quoted as such. So watch for that coming. I would say early December, maybe even late November, if I if I can. Uh, grind it out thrilled uh, about what you have going on i look forward to, to to ordering some things from you and uh and trying it out and i definitely uh, suggest everybody give it a shot and take a look at uh constructivecreative.com and sandandsoda.com uh you know for either your gear work or getting with rich on some of the marketing stuff that he does uh especially he is an email savant uh and he educated us pretty well here today so you got a lot email, going on right? my friend huh <laughs> so you said you used an email right yeah yes yeah so you <laughs> You know, so it's, uh, you, you got a lot going on, my friend, and uh, I'm pumped for you. I'm pumped. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting life back together, uh, back to normal. It's so funny. So I, I have not been going to MMA since uh, about a year and a bit now. Wow. I, I took some time off when the pandemic hit, and then I went back, and then in between waves, it's all about riding the wave. Uh -huh. That's I figured that out as well. And, and so I actually went hunting this last week and I, there I am in a very remote hunting camp in the middle of North, Northern British Columbia. And who walks in? My MMA instructor, his son and their father-in-law. And <laughs> yeah, next thing you know, uh, we're hanging out for a couple of days in, in the North and uh, we all got skunked, but uh, it was, it was a great, great couple of days and a uh, small world. And it just had me, you know, again, uh, gave me that sort of uh, kick in the bum to, to go back and, and um, you know, start my life back up again. Those are the types of things Good. that, you know, you had to give away as a funny side note. So there's the three worst words in the English language. I used to, yeah. And I hate saying I used to be an MMA. It, I won't. It, uh, you're, you're still always, even though you took a little break, you're always still that. And uh, yeah, no, you're, you're life good. in general, though, but I appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And and so so since you're back, I, I, I can proudly announce October 2022 glass build is in Las Vegas. And at the MGM Grand Garden Arena, Rich Pareko, George St. Pierre, MMA. Let's get it on. <laughs> Is that is that I'm a in. deal? Is that is that I'm is in. that a date? You yeah. you against George yeah. St. Pierre? Yeah, you know? right. well, I think he's Buffer, gonna be in my corner. Yeah, Bruce Buffer's getting ready. All right. So <laughs> uh bring it on. Can't wait. All right, my man. I appreciate you spending some time with me. Uh check this is Rich Pareko. Check him out. He's from Constructive Creative. He's also an incredible freelance writer, Glass Canada magazine, amongst other places, constructivecreative.com, standinsoda.com to see what he does and can offer. Thank you, my friend. I look forward to seeing you in person here one of these days soon. Thank you so much okay okay that will wrap things up uh for the interview portions of this month uh thank you again to tom to chris to rich really appreciate it uh i have a special podcast coming later this month uh the uh you know really really excited about it uh it'll be a single guest uh for the entire time uh solo show different format but this guest is absolutely worth it. It's an icon in our industry and somebody that, uh, you know, when he speaks, we listen. And uh, I'm very excited to have him on the podcast. I, I After getting ghosted <laughs> last month, I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not jinxing it. So if for some reason I don't get this guy, I will find another guy. Uh, but, but the guy I'm thinking about is, is an absolute legend, and uh, I don't think he's going to ghost me. So uh, we will have that coming up later this month, so please stay with me on that, uh, and I definitely appreciate that. And then, as I always do at the end of these shows, a uh, couple quick things with regards to uh, TV, movie, entertainment. Uh, on the TV side, documentary side, the Beatles documentary on Disney Plus called Get Back. 
uh, just started it. Uh, my friend Chris Dolan of Guardian Glass had given it a very high recommendation. Uh, it's pretty good. Uh, if you're a music fan or you're a Beatles fan, absolutely. You're digging deep into you know, what goes through these guys' minds and their brilliance uh, is incredible. But it's very long. Uh, I think it's almost six and a half or seven hours total, uh, broken up over three episodes. Uh, and it's not a typical documentary. So it can be, it drags a little bit here and there. Uh, but if you are a Beatles fan, uh, the this is definitely how uh, things came together and uh, uh, really, really well done and a fascinating group. And then, yeah, got to give credit. I saw the movie Ghostbusters, uh, the new Ghostbusters, actually really, really good. Uh, so if uh, if you want a fun, easy movie, uh, a sequel that was done well, yeah, go check that one out. Uh, it's not going to win an Academy Award anytime soon, but it was good uh, and I liked it. So uh, so that's your movie uh, recommendation. And not a lot of us get out to the movies anymore because that world has kind of changed. So uh, a good, easy one to get out and see uh, with with no, no stress, no pressure. Uh, also good for the family. Uh, the new Ghostbusters Afterlife, I believe it's called. So that will wrap things up for this one. I will see you later this month with a very, very special guest uh, on a very, very special podcast. And and uh, very excited for that. But until then, stay well, everybody, and we will see you then. Thank you. Oh, the music is stopped. <laughs>